today we're doing 8.2 notes, area of quadrilaterals. Our objectives are you will be able to identify quadrilaterals by their names, and students will be able to find the area of common quadrilaterals. Oops, sorry. All right, so let's see if we remember the names of these quadrilaterals. Write them in the name of the box. So here's our list to choose from. Go ahead and take a second, pause the video, and see if you can figure out the names of each of these um, quadrilaterals. All right, so here they are. We have our rectangle, hopefully the rectangle square, and maybe something like the rhombus and trapezoids. Maybe those look a little bit familiar, but those are the sides. Um, rectangles and squares both create those 90 degree angles. Squares, all four sides are equal. Rectangle, opposite sides are equal. Um, kites, we have kind of like a if you would see a kite in real life, right, where it has the shorter sides and then the longer sides coming down. Parallelograms, the bottom and top are parallel and the sides are parallel. And the rhombus, all four sides are the same, but it's, it's squished, so we don't have those 90 degree angles like a square. And then trapezoid, just the top and bottom are parallel to one another. All right, so let's go ahead and start with area of a rectangle. So we would have the area equals base times height. So B would stand for base, and H would stand for height, just like we were doing with those triangles, all right? Or if you ever see L times W, that's just length and width. Oops, there we go. So either one of those will work for our rectangles. A square, we can do base times height. So once again, we have the B and H for base times height, or the S here would stand for side. So since all of our sides are the same length, it would be S squared because it would just be S times S, so we can write that as S squared. All right, and then the area of a parallelogram is um, base times height again. So remember that the base here, or sorry, not the base, the height, goes from the very top to the very bottom, and we create that 90 degree angle. Um, and then the base, um, opposite sides are congruent to one another, so those bases should be the same on both sides. All right, so one through three. We want to find the area of each quadrilateral, identify the name of each shape as well. So for number one, we first need to figure out what kind of shape this is. Since the sides are different, I know this is a rectangle, and we also have those 90 degree angles, so I can say 8 times 11 to get the area. So the area of this rectangle is 80. All right, for number two, this is a square. We have those um, right angles and all the sides are congruent to one another. So I'm going to have square and we're gonna use S squared. So the side length is five root two. And I'm gonna go ahead and square back there. Remember when we square, we're squaring both of these. So it's being distributed to the five and the root two. So I have 25 times the square root of four which is just the square root, or not square root, two, it's just two. So multiply those together. The area for my square is 50 inches squared. All right, and then we have the last one here, which is number three. And this one is going to be a parallelogram. All right, so for this one, remember it's base times height. It gives us the base here as 10 we still need to find the heights. Remember the opposite sides are congruent. So if I take over here, I now have this right triangle where I'm missing that third side. We can use the Pythagorean theorem, or if we remember those Pythagorean triples, we're gonna have a three, four, five triangle. So that means the height of this parallelogram is four. So now I can go ahead and do base times height. So 10 times four. That will give me 40 inches squared for the area. All right, I want you guys to go ahead and try four, five, and six, and pause the video and try those three problems out. All right, and here they are. Let's take a look at them. All right, and then number seven, the area is of a square, so we're gonna square, is 50 square feet. Find the length of one side rounded to one decimal place. So we are rounding to one decimal place. We don't have to leave it as um, a radical or a fraction. We can use those decimals. So the square, remember, area equals side squared. So the area is 50, and our goal is to find 
the length of one side. So all we have to do is go ahead and take the square root there. Now we have the square root of 50 equals the side. When we plug that into the calculator, we're going to end up with 7.1 equals s. So one side length is approximately 7.1. Alright, and here's a challenge for the parallelogram. So if you guys want to go ahead and try number 8, see if you guys figure that out, pause the video, then we'll talk about it briefly. Alright, so here we have a parallelogram, and I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So remember this is, this would be 2, 1, and then 1 root 3. So therefore I'm multiplying by 4, so from 2 to 8, I get 4. So my height is 4 root 3. It does want to insert five radical answers, so we will keep that in mind. I'm going to have 16 times 4 root 3. I'm going to multiply the 16 and 4 to get 64. And since it wants it in simplified radical form, I'm going to keep that root 3 there. All right, let's move on to area of rhombus, kite, and a trapezoid. So for all three of these, we are dividing by one half, and we're using the diagonals for a couple of them. So for area of a rhombus and area of a kite, they do have the exact same equation. Um, D1 and D2 just stand for the different diagonals. So it's not 2, 2. D2, the diagonals. Alright, and so see we have 1 half times diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. Alright, and then the area of the trapezoid. This one it has H, so we, we need to know what the height is. And then we have base 1 and base 2. So those B's just stand for base, and we have two different bases. We have the top and we have the bottom. And they are going to be different lengths from one another, so we're going to have a shorter one and a longer one. Alright, so let's go ahead and try some examples here. Alright, so number 9. We want to find the area, and we're also going to label what kind of shape this is. So this one is going to be a rhombus. So we have all four of the sides are congruent to one another, so therefore it's a rhombus. And it's not a square because we don't have those 90 degree angles. So I'm going to have 1 half times 10 times 8. Remember we're talking about the entire side, or the entire diagonal, sorry, not side. The entire diagonal, so I have to take 5 plus 5 and a 4 plus 4. Alright, so once we plug that into a calculator, I'm going to go ahead and get 40. Alright, let's go ahead and try number 10. So number 10, this one is a kite. And once again, I'm going to have 1 half times diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. Remember, we do have to add them together. So I'm going to have 12 and I'm going to have 8. Plug that into a calculator and I'll get 48. Alright, let's, let's go ahead and take a look at number 11. And so this one is a trapezoid. This one's a special one that is slightly different than what we were working with. We know that we are multiplying by one half. We also need to multiply by the height, which is five, and then we need to multiply by the bases added together. So as needed, you can go back and forth between the um, the equations, so you can plug it in as needed. All right. So once we plug this whole thing into a calculator, remember it's six plus thirteen, not six times thirteen. We'll get forty-seven point. Alright, I want you guys to go ahead and try 12, 13, and 14. I'll give you a second, pause the video, try those out. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at them. So we have a kite, a trapezoid, and a rhombus. So they all are being divided by two. Uh, for a kite and a rhombus, you use those diagonals. And a trapezoid, you add the bases, multiply by the height. Alright. Let's go ahead and take a look at 15. A rhombus has an area of 28 feet. So we have area of 28 feet, and we're also dealing with a rhombus. So that tells me the sides are the same, and I'm using 1 half times, one half times diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. All right, if the measure of one diagonal is 16, then what is the measure of the other diagonal? So I can go ahead and plug this stuff in. So 28 equals 1 half times our first diagonal, which is 16. And I want to figure out what is that second diagonal. So I can go ahead and start solving. So 1 half times 16 is 8. So I have 8 times d squared, t, d sub 2, so our second diagonal. So from here I need to divide by 8 because they are being multiplied from one another. So 
so I divide by 8, and I'm going to get about 3.5 is the length of our second diagonal. So even though we are given the area this time, we still want to use those inverse operations to go backwards to find the parts we're missing. Alright, and then here's our challenge problem. Find the area of the kite shown. So take a look at that. Let's see if we can find the area. Then pause the video, try out this challenge problem. Alright, so if you see, we have a right triangle. So that means I'm going to have a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So using those special right triangles are super helpful. But of course, you can always use the Pythagorean theorem as needed. So now I can do the 1 half times diagonal 1, which would be 12, and then diagonal 2, which will be 8. And then I can go ahead and plug this into my calculator to get 48. All right, and that is the end of 8.2. Um, if you have any questions, please be sure to ask your teacher. Rewatch the video as needed, and let anybody know if you need any help. Have a wonderful rest of your day.